Hi guys, my name is Luke and I am so, so glad to be with you today. And I want to talk to you a wee bit more about our emotions. And you see, our emotions can be very colorful, can't they? Very often we can use a different color and personality and attach it to different emotions. For example, we have fiery red anger. We also have sassy green disgust. We have purple fear and the always bubbly yellow joy. But then there's sadness. Sadness is a bit blue and a bit dreary and it's always bringing everyone down. Sadness always seems to kind of get in the way and constantly messing things up. And after a while, we kind of wish that sadness would just go away. But you see, sadness is actually responsible for some of the most powerful and meaningful memories in our lives. Sometimes our sad times lead to the times when we feel the most love from the people around us. And sometimes our sadness actually helps to us to eventually feel joy in a way that we maybe wouldn't have felt it without being sad in the first place. And it's a beautiful picture of what God is able to do with our sadness. When things go wrong and our tears maybe start to flow out of our eyes, God has a way of turning our sadness into joy. And nowhere is this illustrated more amazingly than in the story of Jesus' friend called Lazarus. I wonder, can you say Lazarus? I know you, you said that better than even I can. But what we're going to do is we're going to watch a short video of this story between Jesus and this man called Lazarus. Jesus had a friend named Lazarus who was very sick. <coughs> he had two sisters named Mary That's okay. and Martha Here you go. who sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. So come on. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God. Oh, uh, what? So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. All right, I, I know. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Ah, uh, are you sure? But his disciples did not think this was a good idea because the people in Judea had tried to kill Jesus. But Jesus told them they were going anyway. He said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. Eh, you'll be okay. The disciples thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. What? And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Many people had come to be with Mary and Martha because their brother had died. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Then she returned to Mary. She told Mary, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep. Oh, let's go too. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. 
Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, See how much he loved him? But some said, This man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry and he arrived at the tomb. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. Wait, hold on, Jesus! But Martha protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus said, Didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? Go ahead. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here. So they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, his hands, feet, and head wrapped in cloth. Uh -huh. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Wahoo! Many of the Jews who were there believed in Jesus, for he had raised Lazarus from the dead. We see a lot of different stuff happen in this video, don't we? We see that Jesus' disciples they didn't really understand why Jesus wouldn't get up straight away and go and see Lazarus, his sick friend. This might have been the last chance he would ever have to see him. Likewise, Mary and Martha, they didn't really understand why Jesus wouldn't come quickly to heal their brother. You see, Jesus never looks at stuff the way we do as humans. He knew that ultimately he would see his friend again in heaven. But we also see in this passage that Jesus had another very important reason for not going straight away. He wanted to give his followers and us a reason to go to him when we're sad, a reason to turn to Jesus when things feel awful. We've seen in the video that Jesus ended up weeping and crying with his friends, and then he comforted them. But he didn't just leave it like that. What did he do instead? He turned their unbelievable sadness and sorrow into unimaginable joy. They were so happy when their friend and their brother Lazarus came back to life. God loves us unconditionally. And so he sent Jesus to die for each and every one of us so that we could know him in a personal way. You can know him as a friend, as one of your best friends ever. Jesus was fully human, so he understands what it's like to be sad. And we can always go to him whenever we're feeling upset. No one really enjoys sadness. I think if we had it our way, sadness would never be a thing. No one would ever scrape their knees in the playground. You would never lose friends. You would never get sick. You would never lose a game or get a bad grade in school. And if we had our choice, things would always be positive. They would always be upbeat and we would never get blue or dreary or sad. But some of the greatest joys come in life from sadness. How many of you can think of a day that started out awful and you were sad and upset and you just maybe wanted the day to finish, but it ended up great and amazing and you were so joyful. Maybe mom or dad saw that you weren't feeling very well and so they did something to cheer you up, or things went wrong in school and a friend came over to give you a wee bit of a pep talk. Or you see that you fell down and you got hurt and maybe mom or dad or an auntie or uncle or granny or granda, maybe they brought you an ice cream to make you feel a wee bit better. It's great that moms and dads and friends are always there for us in the good time, but it means so much more when they're there for us when things aren't so good. When, we're, when we are a wee bit more upset, when we need someone around us to help us through the hard times. Their love reminds us that we are not alone and it reassures us that we don't have to face things all by ourselves. We've seen in the video that Jesus' friends, they went and got Jesus because they knew that he would comfort them, that he would be sad with them, and that he wouldn't just push them off to the side and go, no, I only want to know you when things are good or happy. Jesus wanted to be there when things were tough when things were hard. And we have people around us who want to do the exact same thing for you and for me. When, it, when we give our sadness to God, we'll find an even greater joy. And the Bible teaches us that 
In this world, it's, we're going to have sorrows, but they are temporary sorrows. And that one day we will be in the place with the Lord where no sadness, no tears, no pain will ever be a thing. All the hurt and the pain and the sadness will go and we will just be left with joy. And God won't always stop the sad times because you see, we live in this broken world where things go wrong. Sadness can just be around the corner. But when we believe in Jesus, we know that joy comes after sadness. He will wipe away our tears and he will give us his comfort and then he will give us his joy as well. And you can't escape sadness, unfortunately. I know some of you are maybe wishing that you could, but you don't always have to face sadness alone. Look around you, you've got friends and family that want to be there for you. So whether you're happy or sad, there's no better place to be than in the arms of Jesus. So however you're feeling today, ask Jesus to be with you. Whether you're sad and you need his joy, whether you're happy and you want to thank him for being so happy, be with Jesus because it is the best place you could ever be. So guys, thank you so, so much for listening today. And what we're going to do to finish is a really short prayer activity. What I want you to do is get a piece of paper, whether it's red or white, you can color it in. It's completely up to you. But I want you to cut out of it a nice heart, okay? So you can see my heart here. But unfortunately, my heart has been broken by the things that make me sad, make me upset, and maybe it's the same for you. And then what we're going to do is we are going to get some plasters, okay? So you can see I've got my plasters here. And on the plaster, what you're going to do is I want you to write down the names of people that have maybe made you sad in the past, maybe things that make you sad, falling down, losing a friend, getting sick, whatever it may be but I want you to write it on the plaster. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick the plasters over the broken heart so that we eventually have something that looks like this. And when you've got this and you've got everything written on your plasters and your heart has been binded back together, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pray for the things that we've written on our plasters or maybe the people that we've written on our plasters, but also that we would ask God to come and be with us in our sadness and to give us some of his joy. So we're gonna pray now. So if you'd like to close your eyes, if you wanna hold your hands out, put them together, however you pray, but let's pray together really, really quickly before we finish. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love each and every one of us. And that Lord, you don't want us to be sad, that like we've seen from the video, that Jesus weeps with us, but then he gives us his joy. So Lord, I pray for whatever it is that we've written on our plasters, people's names or things that make us sad, Lord. I pray, Father, that you would help us in those sad times, that you would give us your joy, Lord, and that we would know that you are there for us no matter what. So Lord, be with us all, and we ask this in your name. Amen. So guys, thank you so, so much for watching today. I hope that you know that God is there for you no matter what, and we will see you soon.